Wendy should have been shopping for her wedding dress on Friday. Right now on CBS 12 News at noon, a woman from South Florida murdered just a week after her engagement. What investigators now say about the man reportedly behind the brutal attack. And we are following breaking news out of Maryland. Five people shot at a drugstore distribution center. You are looking live right now at the massive police presence. Actually, a press conference that we are waiting on that is going to start at any minute. We'll have the latest details about the shooter. CBS 12 News starts now with breaking news. Yeah, we want to get to that breaking news out of Aberdeen, northeast of Baltimore. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Terry Hornstein. And I'm Matt Lincoln. Officials have confirmed at least three people have been killed in a workplace shooting at a Rite Aid distribution center where nearly a thousand people work. Let's take a live look uh, at the uh, where we're waiting for a press conference to begin. Baltimore FBI and the Federal Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives are on the scene. Right now, little information as to what led up to the shooting has been given. A couple of uh, multiple reports that is was a woman who was the shooter here. But other than that, no word on the suspect. Let's take a look at the aerials of this of the of the scene. Again, this is live. People are being told to avoid the area. We're going to continue to follow this on air and online. And once that press conference begins, we will bring it to you. An arrest made in the murder of a Green Acres woman stabbed to death while jogging in Washington, D.C. Yeah, the 35-year-old Lake Worth High School grad had just gotten engaged a few days before the cold-blooded killing. CBS host Cara Duffy joins us now in the studio with the new information. Met police say 23-year-old Anthony Crawford is the man who brutally stabbed Wendy Martinez several times during her evening run. The attack unprovoked and the motive still a mystery. Friends of newly engaged Wendy Martinez say they should be planning a wedding, but instead they're now forced to plan a funeral. Wendy should have been shopping for her wedding dress on Friday. Washington, D.C. police say tips from the community and this surveillance video helped them track down 23-year-old Anthony Crawford. They say Crawford stabbed Martinez randomly, then took off. This is a very isolated instance. Uh, you don't see crimes like this uh, very much, even during the course of my career. Martinez bleeding from her neck, then staggered into a nearby Chinese takeout restaurant. Customers rushed to help her, but it was too late. Her friends, family, and new fiance now in disbelief. I know Donnie spoke with her, her fiance spoke with her an hour before her murder. I was texting with her two hours before her murder. I mean, this has just been a shock. Martinez's friends and family plan to hold a vigil tonight at Logan Circle in D.C. where this deadly attack happened. That area known for being a trendy and relatively safe neighborhood. Meanwhile, her accused killer now char charged rather with first degree murder while armed. Reporting in studio, I'm Cara Duffy, CBS 12 News. And to watch the entire news conference again on how police made this arrest in this case, it's on our Facebook page. Just search CBS 12 News. Right now, a security breach at a Florida airport. The Joint Terrorism Task Force is now investigating after authorities say a man hopped a fence onto an American Airlines plane at the Orlando Melbourne International Airport. This all happened early this morning. Authorities placed the airport on lockdown, suspending flights for nearly five hours. Investigators have detained the man, they say, as a student pilot from Trinidad with connections to Canada. We have a CBS 12 News crew on the way to the scene. We will have more on the suspect coming up in just minutes. Developing right now, dozens of families evacuated from their Vero Beach homes, but there's no emergency. This evacuation was actually planned. CBS 12's Thomas Forster joins us with why the Army Corps of Engineers asked residents there to leave. Thomas. Yeah, Terry, I can tell you right now, the neighborhood that I am is extremely quiet. I mean, you can hear the birds chirping because really there isn't a soul here. It's because the Army Corps of Engineers are actually digging for munitions that they say was way back during basic training back during the World War II era. Now take a look. You can see it all starts here at Club Drive and Turtle 
Cove Lane, you can see a lot of vacant houses here. And like I said, it is extremely quiet. Now, it's, there is a little over a two mile radius and about 10 to 20 homes in a 10 apartment complex are in this area. They have listened to the Army Corps of Engineers as far as leaving, but there are, have, are a few though that just ignored the request. Now, Terry, some residents have told the Army Engineers, Army Corps of Engineers that they're able to actually return to their home by five o'clock today and they're hoping that they can do so. Now, this is just part one. This is going to go on for the next two weeks. The Army Corps will continue to search for munitions in this area. Up next, starting next week, Wednesday, South Park, South Beach Park, just about a mile from where I am now. Reporting live in Vero Beach, I'm Thomas Forrester, CBS 12 News. Thanks, Thomas. Now we'd like to go back out to the breaking news in Aberdeen, where we are going to a press conference where a shooting at a Rite Aid distribution center has led to three dead and at least two more injured. Now let's take a look live in that press conference now. Uh, unfortunately, the county exec and I and all of our law enforcement partners have been standing here before. Uh, we stand here yet again today. Uh, you know, many people have been affected by the events this morning. Uh, and our prayers, the prayers and thoughts and prayers of the Hartford County Sheriff's Office go out to all those affected. Uh, there, we are so preliminary into this investigation. I know there's a million questions. We're not going to take any questions today. Um, I know you have many, but as Christy said, we, it's so important that we deal in facts. Uh, there's families that are irreparably harmed from today's event. Uh, we don't want to make it as if you could make it worse. You certainly can. We don't want to be part of that. We want to release facts, so please uh, allow us the time to gather facts and share those with you. Um, uh, I'm going to give you as much information as we can right now, even though it's very preliminary and it's very limited. Uh, at about 9.06 this morning, a report came into a dispatch center from the Rite Aid Distribution Center of shots fired. Immediately, deputies, officers, troopers, other first responders uh, responded. Uh, we were on scene just in over five minutes. Uh, arriving law enforcement, fire and EMS units quickly uh, paired up together, uh, got into the building in order to render first aid where appropriate, uh, treat patients and an attempt to locate a, a suspect or suspects. At this time I can confirm multiple wounded and multiple fatalities. Based on what we know right now and again very preliminary, the lone suspect in this incident is in custody and is in critical condition at a local hospital. It appears to be uh, a single weapon that was used, a handgun, uh, and there were no shots fired by any of the law enforcement officers responding to the scene. We do not believe that there's an additional threat anywhere to our Hartford County community. We have set up a family reunification center working with the county executive and our county partners at the Level Volunteer Firehouse. And, and again, this investigation is very early. Um, I and our office will be happy to give you more information as it becomes available. Again, I ask you to uh, keep the victims of today's uh, tragic event in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, and I also you know, have to uh, thank our fellow first responders. We have responders here from the federal government who were seen within minutes, the FBI, the DEA, ATF, uh, state police, MDTA police, natural resources. The local municipal departments of Aberdeen, Haverty, Grace, and Bel Air, uh, you name it, as we've seen unfortunately in our community before, when something like this happens, uh, you can't have enough police and you can't have them fast enough. And we are very fortunate here that everyone works so well together and responds so well together that we were on scene and able to get as much aid in as quickly as possible. So that's what we have for you at this time. Um, Christy will put out a little later when we're going to have some additional details, and I, I know you're anxious for them, we'll, we'll be as timely as we can. And the county executive did want to offer a few thoughts this morning. Sir? Thank you. Could I get your name, please, sir? Sheriff Jeff Gaylor, G-A-H-L-E-R. Thanks, Sheriff Gaylor. Uh, Barry Glassman, the Harper County Executive. Uh, I just got off the phone with Governor Hogan a few moments ago and updated uh, the governor on uh, the incident so far as we know it. Uh, he offered all of his resources available under state government. We certainly appreciate the Maryland State Police, all the allied agencies that responded. Uh, you know, I, I followed this probably from the moment the call came in on our dispatch uh, and listened to the radio transmissions. Uh, unfortunately, in today's world, we have active shooter drilling and drills, and I can tell you and tell our Hartford County citizens that every agency performed at the top 
of their profession. And the response from all our allied agencies was great. Our volunteer fire and EMS system responded with medical units. So I am thankful to all the agencies that came out to help us today uh, to get through this, which is becoming a, a too often occurrence, not only in Harford County, but in the country. So with that said, we, we really reach out to those families that are suffering right now that have lost loved ones uh, and offer our services as we begin uh, to get them reunified, uh, not only with loved ones lost, but with workers that have been displaced. Uh, so I certainly thank all our courageous men and women that have helped us this morning. Sheriff, are you suggesting that the suspect um, shot his or herself? Jane, we're not going to give any additional information right now. Again, this is very fluid, and you know us. We will be sure to provide you the information as soon as we have it. So follow our feeds, and I will absolutely let you know when the next media briefing will be today, and hopefully we'll be able to nail down some of those other details and, and give you a better picture of what unfolded. You've been listening to a press conference out of Aberdeen, Maryland, at the site of a Rite Aid distribution center where a lone gunman has uh, opened fire and has killed at least three people. That gunman is the lone suspect. He or she is in custody. It is in critical uh, condition. We know that there was just uh, one weapon, a single handgun, and we know that no shots were fired by the law enforcement. So we don't know too many details about the suspects. Uh, we have uh, seen some reports, uh, NBC News reporting that it is uh, a woman, a female shooter, uh, but we don't have uh, any other information. And we, what we do know is that law enforcement did not fire any shots, but that suspect is in critical condition. Yeah, we're still following this very closely uh, this afternoon. Of course, we're going to bring you all the latest details as we get them. We want to get to another developing story. One man bringing a new meaning to hopping a flight. Why a man was detained this morning in Melbourne. And one airline trying to cut back on wait times when boarding the plane. The new tools they're going to put in place. And plenty of heat today and plenty of thunderstorms this weekend. Lauren Oleski will have a look at our increasing storm chances. That's coming up. Way FM, proud partner of the CBS 12 News Network, the one to turn to. You're watching CBS 12 News at Noon. We're still following that breaking news from outside of Baltimore, Maryland. This is a, a look. We're actually in Perryman, Maryland, a very small little uh, suburban area around Aberdeen where three people are dead in a shooting uh, at a Rite Aid distribution center. We just heard from the Sheriff Jeff Gaylor from the county. He says that the lone suspect is in custody as and is in critical condition. There was also just one gun involved and there were no shots fired by law enforcement. If we have any more information, we will give it to you on CBS12.com and right here on CBS12 News. Yeah, you can still see a very heavy active police presence there. And the sheriff also saying that there were several agencies involved, uh, for federal agencies. He says the ATF was involved. There are SWAT teams on the scene right now. Of course, we're learning a lot of new information uh, by the minute here. But again, we know three people are dead. At least five have been shot. This is uh, in Aberdeen, Maryland at a Rite Aid distribution center. Uh, we're learning a lot of new information. Matt, go ahead. You wanted to say something? Well, yeah, I was just going to say this is kind of rocking this, this little community. The local schools have been placed on lockdown. You can see just the massive amounts of law enforcement that is, is on scene. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, though, it says, uh, you know, the law enforcement said they've been preparing for this and uh, and everything from their actual their response said went as well as it could have uh, as the suspect is in custody and is in critical condition we'll let you know if we get any more information about that suspect all right we want to get to another story the search is on this afternoon to find the person who brutally attacked this grandfather at a popular shopping plaza in palm beach gardens police say he was beaten so badly he has died from his injuries cbs 12's rosie woods joins us live at the shops on oak brook in palm beach gardens with why police need your help now more than ever rosie I just got off the phone with Palm Beach Gardens Police. They tell me they have increased patrols in this area. They've also reached out to all the local businesses so that they're aware of what's going on, but they say they still need your help to find this person. Now, keep in mind, it was right here behind me. The victim was simply walking out of the Steinmart when he was knocked to the ground and violently attacked. Police say it's one of the worst attacks that they've ever seen in this area. 
77 year old Bernard Fairman was hospitalized for nearly a week, then died from the injuries he suffered in that beating. We're told two witnesses tried to stop the attacker before he took off. His neighbor tells CBS 12 News that Fairman was the type of person that would not hurt anyone. Wonderful gentleman, always happy, smiling, sweetheart, friendly, helpful. I, I just can't believe that somebody would pick on him. Police have not identified a suspect, but they want to talk to this man, a person of interest caught on surveillance video at the Publix at the south end of the shopping center. He's believed to be in his late 20s, early 30s, with a large tattoo on the outside of his left calf. Police are currently looking into some new leads they tell me about, but so far they say that they have still not found this person. But for now, live in Palm Beach Gardens, Rosie Woods, CBS 12 News at noon. We want to bring you back to a story we told you about earlier this uh, half hour. We're learning new details this noon about the security breach at the Orlando Melbourne International Airport. We are learning the suspect was a 26 year old from Trinidad. He was taken into custody. This all happening very early this morning. You can see in this video here, it was still dark outside. Authorities did place the airport on lockdown, suspending flights. This lasted for nearly five hours. This is a rather small airport. Authorities have detained the man. They say he is a student pilot from Trinidad. He does have connections to Canada. Again, we have a CBS 12 news crew on the way to this scene. Of course, we're going to bring you updates throughout the day as well as on CBS12.com. Tracking the Florence aftermath right now, President Donald Trump is back in D.C. after touring the storm zone yesterday. Much of the Carolinas is still underwater. Hundreds of thousands of people have no power. Roads are closed, making rescues very difficult. This morning, the death toll stands at 37. CBS 12 is participating in a joint fundraising effort of the Salvation Army and Sinclair Broadcast Group, which provides services to the station under a services agreement. Sinclair Broadcasting also owns CBS 12. So far, we've raised over $43,000. You can make donations on CBS12.com or by texting the word Florence to 91999. Well, coming up on CBS 12 News at 3, the key to dieting success may literally be right in your hands. How your hands can help you lose some weight. Plus, how eating a Mediterranean diet could help women protect themselves from stroke. What you need to know, that's all ahead at 3. Really what you need to do is just follow weather food yeah, on Instagram. Yeah, but now I'm just really hungry. <laughs> I'm starving. I'm always hungry, though. Uh, it's hot outside Very today. hot. That's kind of today's big story. And then we have more thunderstorms mm. that are going to be moving in later and this weekend. So... Lots of exciting weather things going on right now. I don't know how exciting it is that it's really hot outside. It's really well, that it's hot. gonna rain this weekend. I yeah. know, well, not exciting, exciting about any of this. Not all weekend, don't worry, I promise. It's exciting in that I have a lot to tell you. So we're taking a live look outside from the Kravis camera. If you ever hear me say the sea breeze is gonna start, this is what I mean. Notice how dry it is east and how much more cloud coverage there is a little bit further west and a little bit inland. And it's literally like night and day, such a really distinct line between the cloud coverage and the blue sky. That's the wind pushing all the moisture inland. And then once it moves far enough inland, it rises. And that's why we see those inland clouds, which is generally why the inland areas have higher thunderstorm chances when we have that east wind. Little shower just popped up right near Port St. Lucie. Also have a little bit of rain developing in inland uh, Indian River County. You're going to want the rain today to help cool you off. Very hot out there. 90 degrees right now in Delray Beach. Will, uh, Wellington's at 91. It's 87 in Port St. Lucie. Vero Beach, you're at 90. 87 right now in Indian Town. But of course, it always feels hotter outside than it actually is down here. 105. That's what it feels like right now in the acreage. It feels like 103 in Boynton Beach. We have a heat index of 100 in Jensen Beach and in Fort Pierce right now. So make sure you're staying hydrated out there. Here's a look at our record high temperatures for this day at the Palm Beach International Airport and at the Vero Beach Airport. 90, uh, 92 is the record high, excuse me, in West Palm. It's 95 in Vero. We could break the record today in West Palm Beach. We typically hit the high right around 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to keep a close eye on that for you. You'll see on the hour by hour today. Remember the sea breeze. You see the winds coming in off of the water. That's why everything develops and pushes inland. Tomorrow's a little bit of our transition day. We're going to start seeing more moisture moving in. A little disturbance off to our east. Nothing tropical or anything, but it will bring a higher moisture content back into the area, which means we'll see slightly stronger thunderstorms and maybe a few more thunderstorms as we head into the weekend. Again, no weekend washout for you, but you might notice some of the storms will be a bit stronger Saturday and Sunday. And don't forget, Saturday is the first day of fall. Matt and Terry. 
In consumer news, United Airlines is trying to cut down how long you wait in line. This sounds like some good news. It's slashing, slashing the number of lines at boarding gates from five down to two. Travelers will also receive an alert on their phone on when to go to the gate. Some say it's not the boarding process, though, that slows everything down. It's getting the luggage in those overhead bins. I'd have to agree. Mm -hmm. All right, here's a look at today's question of the day. According to a recent survey, the average American couple does this about every two to three months. The answer on CBS 12 News at 3. And, of course, we'll have more on that workplace shooting. We're coming up right after this break. All right, we want to get back to that breaking news from outside of Baltimore, Maryland, about 50 miles, 55 miles northeast of Baltimore. The Harford Sheriff's Office just tweeting out that a family reunification center has been set up. It looks like they're clearing the building right now. I do believe about 1,000 people work at this Rite Aid distribution center uh, where three people were killed, at least five shot. Uh, we do know that the suspect right now is in critical condition as well in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that there was just one weapon, a single handgun that was used by the suspect. Uh, and uh, there were no, we know that there are no shots fired by law enforcement. So uh, still, though, a very scary situation. Uh, we know that it's now safe, obviously, with the suspect in custody and in critical condition. But I can't imagine what it must be like for uh, those people that just went to work today at that Rite Aid distribution center and what they must be going through right now. Yeah, it appears that they are clearing out that building. Apparently, what it looks like is those are some of the employees that work there. Again, about 1,000 employees uh, do work at this Rite Aid distribution center outside of Baltimore, Maryland. Of course, we're going to continue to follow this uh, breaking news story as we learn more information throughout the day. Because mm -hmm, we're still looking for more information on exactly who this suspect is. And why a motive as well. Mm -hmm. So, of course, be sure to join us throughout the day in our newscast. Our next newscast coming up at 3. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can always catch the news on CBS12.com.